So tell me something. What's all this that I've been reading about you guys and the, and the whole Ed Sheeran thing? Is that true? <laughs> Which Ed Sheeran thing? <laughs> you, uh, you, you revealed that he was releasing something when it was embargoed. Us. Is this true or is that stunt? A um, little from column A, a little from column B. What we we said we said that uh, if, if you had a garden company and you were cutting hedges, he might be playing Croke Park and things like that. So there was this, there was this there was an embargo. <laughs> big embargo, and the promoter rang our boss, and our boss was very angry with us because she's always angry with us because we get complaints. What really added fuel to the fire was Ed Sheeran tweeted a, someone tagged him with the article, and he replied and said, "Let me make a call." So. That's what really set, set it off. Um, See, you're just two naughty boys. Very naughty. Yeah, yeah. Very naughty. naughty. Normally, <laughs> it, it's our job to, to research the guest. You normally research who's interviewing you. you well, no, i tell you why. Because when I saw your names, because I've heard of you guys, right? Wow. And then I, I was like, oh, I just want to read up a bit more about them. And there's, yeah. there's quite a lot of stuff about you two. Oh, right. Okay. What, what did you see? In a good way. No, no, just back how you... you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, do you, what else? Tell us more things about us. Yeah. <laughs> just, just that you're very popular, and it's all good. This is why this is going to be great. Okay, it good, is good, because good. do you know who's popular? You're popular. Yeah. Um, Guys, we're all in the same boat. We're all I, popular. Thank God. The latest season of Ant and Dex Saturday Night Takeaway, I think it was fantastic, and I think you were the best thing on it this year. Oh, wow. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, we, um, we had a good time to it. Listen, look, you guys know more than anyone, you know, especially when you're a double act, they're very generous. They allow me to do a lot of stuff. So we had a really good time. It was just, it was just hard without an audience. But yeah. I think if anyone pulled it off, they, they did. So, yeah, it's a good series. You've got very good on stills. <laughs> well, can I just point this out, right? Yeah. I was very nervous from those stilts. And for those that didn't see it, I came out on these stilts. So I was a towering above Antonette, which I do normally without stilts. Wouldn't be hard but, in fairness. <laughs> but it's when they started jeering me and it was like, good, trying to push me over. I was like, come on. I was watching the Instagram live before the show went live and I found it fascinating to see such a big production. Yet yeah, you and the presenters, the boys, everything was so calm. It was like, this is just our job. This is what we do. Yeah, it's funny, you know, because when when I used to do Britain's Got More Talent, they would obviously have each other when they would come out those big juggernaut doors. And it's the same with it's the same on Saturday Night Takeaway because when you're behind there, it's, it's pretty soulless. But of course, when the doors open, it's like right here we go, and there's no turning back. You know, once once we're live, we're live. So it's, it's exciting, but it is nerve wracking. You always tend to get the giggles when you're when you're on there, even though you like you're fully you must be, you must be fully rehearsed and everything. But like you still you you look like the three of you are having such a laugh. Well, see, this is what we do. Um, actually, I don't even think I've ever spoke about this, right? But when we do our rehearsals, so Ant may go, well, I'm going to say something there, and Deb may go, well, I'm going to chuck in a line there, just for the timing of the show. But the good thing is, they never see the costume, they never know exactly what we're going to what the mm. opening line's going to be. So. So when it is live, it's still nice and fresh for us. So, so yeah, we do, we, we, we surprise each other, which is a good thing. And we're allowed to do that, which is an even better thing. Yeah, it really is. It's People crazy. always ask us again, because we work together, if we're at somewhere, where's Jim or where's Nobby? Do you get asked, like, do you have to say to people sometimes, we don't live together? All, all the time. Yeah, where, that, that, that line, where, where's that on deck? You know, so they're in my pockets. But do you feel like, <laughs> am I not good enough? Yeah, of course it is. Listen, the great thing is we've known each other for, for like 23 years now. Because we all met on Kids TV. So they'd come out of Biker Grove, then they did Saturday mornings. Then once they finished Saturday mornings, myself and Holly Willoughby took over Saturday mornings and, and it's just gone on from there. And, you know, to think now that we're all together again is, is amazing. So uh, everybody got really upset when Takeaway finished. And like there was, there was reports of kids crying and everything when, when you announced that next week was going to be the last one and everything last week. Um, but the good news is Saturday nights are getting fun again because you're back. Yes. We're back with a brand new series in for a penny. And uh, yeah, it's on Saturday night at seven o'clock. Um, we, we filmed it in the pandemic, in the middle of the pandemic. And it, halfway through when we were coming up with the new games, because obviously they all had to be socially distanced and, and very safe. But I, 
I slightly got a bit too nervous about it and said, look, you know, maybe we should hold the show. Maybe we should wait until, fingers crossed, it's all over. And I was completely wrong. And I'm so pleased that, uh, that the production team didn't listen to me at all because it's been the best series we've done. That we've had to come up with games that genuinely are funnier when people are two metres apart than when they were like being able to hug and stuff. Okay, so one of the games is called Sausage Roll. And we do this whole big thing, this big intro, and then we reveal them, Sausage Roll. And the basic idea is, so imagine, right, imagine you, Ginger, and another, you're, you're, one of you's lying down, and the other one has placed a sausage roll at the other one's feet. Then the person that's on their knees can only use their nose, their tongue, and their chin to move the sausage roll up the body and into the other person's mouth, right? <laughs> now, yeah. bear with me on this, right? Because when one time we were doing it, we were in Southampton, and I said, uh, I said, oh, what's your name? He said, Danny, it's nice to see you, Danny. What's your name, Fiona? Good to see you, but how do you know each other? And he went, that's my mum. And I was like, what? Oh, no. <laughs> so I've just told you the rules of the game, and you do realise that you are going to have to roll a sausage roll up your mum and get it in her mouth. He went, yeah. And do you know what? To his credit, he did it. And it's on Saturday night prime time. <laughs> Half seven, Virgin Media one. I had like the, <laughs> the production meeting of something like this in a very serious way. There must be people pitching ideas at you and the producers. And you go, no, no, sausage roll. Sausage roll I'll keep, yeah. But what, what is one of the yeah. any games that got rejected that you wish had happened? Um, is there any that, uh, oh yeah, we tried to do a thing called Super Bowl, right? Which was in a bowling alley and you had a big vat of tomato soup in this clear bowl. And if you could get a strike for every pin you knocked down, you'd win 10 pounds, all right? Yeah. But if you got a strike, then we'd double your money, blah, blah, blah. And all you had to do was keep enough of the soup in the bowl before it goes down below the line. And it just didn't work. You know, we tried it literally four or five times. And the only thing we did was destroy people's clothes. And it was just, we got to a point where it's like, this is gonna be too expensive. We're gonna have to pay for people's outfits. We, that never made it, but, um, but the majority of them do because the production team, we all get together over a weekend, everybody brings their ideas, then on the following weekend we all get the props for the games that we like and then we just, we literally test every single one out, every one. And I know you can go to pubs at the moment where you are, so is it a weekend in the pub where ideas are forgotten or are they written down or is it all very work orientated? <laughs> No, it is. I think look, the good thing is we've got a good WhatsApp group. So if anybody comes up with a good idea, they'll just chuck it in and go, listen, this could work. And and you look, you Pete, you know, you know this. You know when something feels funny or not. Mm -hmm. And I think when somebody has the, the little nugget, you just know it's either gonna work or not. And if it's not gonna work, you know, we'll test stuff out, obviously, um, between us, but it's the general public that make the show. I'm telling you now, if it wasn't for them, if this show was based around celebrities. Not a hope in hell. Yeah. Would just wouldn't work. And like it's, it's you as well, though. I mean, like you been let off the let loose. You know, you you've been slagging off the people in the street. It's just it's just so funny. Is there? What, what, what do you mean? I'm, I'm I'm very supportive. No, I know absolutely. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I'm just sorry that you can't kick, kiss the grannies this season. But like, no. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know what? Your granny kisser. <laughs> you look. That's, if there's anything that uh, see, do I regret that? Again, but for your listeners that have been to see it, you know, there was this old granny and she was a lovely lady and all she wanted was a couple of kisses. But the problem is every time we finished the game, she wanted another kiss. And it just all became a bit awkward, the whole thing. But she had a great time. You should have, you should have got your sausage roll out for her. Just, I mean, <laughs> what happens when it goes wrong? Well, the thing is, you, you've got to remember that nobody's cast in the show. So we don't... We don't know who's going to play the game. So some, you know, we had this guy that uh, he was playing the, the, the certain rounds of, of one game. I think we were in Blackpool, and he was just going to the gym. And by the end of the by the end of the fourth game, the guy was destroyed. You know, he, he's not going to the gym anymore. He's going home for a shower because he couldn't stay out in the street. And at the end of it, I have to say, no, you, you've lost. Oh, no. And he goes, ah, oh, all right. And he just goes back home. But I think this is the thing that, look, not to go on about the pandemic, but I think it has changed people's attitude in terms of, look, let's have a bit of a giggle where we can. And if we can have a laugh, then we should do it. So, um, as I say, during, during the film that we did for this series, um, everybody was just really up for just having a good laugh. And when the gold jacket comes out, 
It's anyone's game. The, the guy who stands with the, the name of the show, COVID sort of wrecked his gig or is he still in it? No, he's he's still in it. You know, the good thing about it is that's a lovely little gig for him. He gets yeah. to stay in a lovely hotel. He gets to stay and all he's got to do is hold up a board. That's all he's got to do. <laughs> you but you know what? When, when, we, when all, everything gets released a bit more, I'd love to I'd love to come in and see you guys. We should do a couple of games. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it. yeah. We're always leading ideas. Trust us. We have to do 20 hours of live radio a week. So all the ideas help. We got actually, if you've got ones you don't use, you can send them over Yeah, we've got a few old ones you might want. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I mean, sometimes we do stuff like the in-ear pranks and, and they're just, they're so fun to do and equally, obviously, people enjoy watching and listening. Um, yeah. What do you yeah. think about, you know, shows like you do at a fixed time? There's never been more ways to watch entertainment, but there's still something about everyone kind of watching a show at the same time, like In For A Penny, like Takeaway, whatever. What, what is it that makes that still be a thing? I think it's, um, I think it's that thing where, when people say to me about, oh, I, I watched, I binged on a box set and I watched eight or 10 episodes in one night. I think there's something nice about having a little treat of an entertainment show that is only going to be seen once a week. And I think if they were to stream in for a penny or obviously they couldn't stream Saturday Night Takeaway because it's live. But, you know, I think, um, I think it would just spoil it. And I think there is that moment where there's not many shows where all the family can sit down. And I... I dare anyone, if you haven't seen him for a penny, you know, I think it's worth just taking a look because no matter whether you're an 80 year old granny, which you've clearly made sure I, everyone knows I love, <laughs> or an 80 year old kid, or an 18 year old student, this show, honestly, it worked. And I tell you now, it's a, it's a dream to present it. Interesting, it's the hardest show to do, but listen, you know, there's harder things in life, do you know what I mean? But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a joy to be part of. You have this running gag that nobody knows who you are and everyone knows Anton Dave, but that's not true. Come on. What is the what is the, what is the, <laughs> the weirdest fan reaction from a kid or from somebody just like the, the massive fan? I Okay, there's a couple of things that have happened. So one, I was once sent a massive family, like dairy milk, one of those massive bars, and my face was carved out oh. of, every, of every cube. Wow. But I mean, it was, it was like, it was actually incredible before I then realised it was absolutely freaky. It sounds like something out of an episode of Luther. Well, yeah. And, and the card said, I hope you enjoy the chocolate. I so I'm going to eat that big bar of chocolate once someone's fingered it. Oh. You know. Out of you and in deck, who has the nicest jammer? Nicest jammer? Her. Oh, nice. Oh, uh, it's Ant. Without yeah. question. He's got the nicest car. Right. Um, and then I'm going to say followed by followed by Deck and then then me. Now I've got one of those remote control. <laughs> when interesting when I uh, got Saturday Morning Kids TV, the first thing I the first thing I bought, which I still think is the most lavish thing, really, is um, I bought a grand piano because I play piano. I love piano. I love the fact it's called a jammer. Jam jar, yeah, we... yeah, jam jar. This could be a new form of catchphrase. Jam jar, Carl. Jam jar, yeah. Dog and bone. <laughs> <laughs> and catchphrase, of course, you're nailing it on that as well. It's a great show. Yeah, it's really, I, I was told the other day that um, catchphrase, which I never realised, had been on for 30 years. Yeah. And obviously, Roy Walker, you know, he was the king of catchphrase. Before I let you go, I'm just curious from even an entertainment industry point of view, you, you talk about Holly and yourselves and the lads when you were young kids. Was there one person who kind of pushed you all in entertainment? It's usually someone gives you a lucky break or... Was it just hard work or what, what was it? Well, yeah, I think it's a massively um, hard work because I think if you don't, yeah, I think I, I think it was David Jason who once said on Michael Parkinson, he said, um, Michael Parkinson said, oh, you're very lucky with the jobs that you've got. And I think his response was something like, it, it's bizarre, Michael, because the harder I work, the luckier I seem to get. But I do believe there is a lot of luck, but I do believe it's persistence, especially now. Well, thanks for being so persistent, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry but you know what i'm just so pleased that the link that we put i'm sure i don't know whether your listeners will, will know about this but obviously we you couldn't hear me i couldn't hear you but we got there guys we got there we did we did, we it. did. it must have felt like we were you know amateurs at the start which we are but <laughs> just googled it was Amateur just a button Irish it was just it was, <laughs> just one button on the bloody keyboard that's all it was well do you know what i'm gonna do for the afternoon what? i'm gonna read up more about you two Oh, well, don't go too far. You might don't have go, a nap. <laughs> I, might, I might start your fan club. 
Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. go past 2012. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, thanks again. I really appreciate it. By the way. Not at all. So seven o'clock, seven thirty. Virgin Media. The, by the way, if you want to watch the on demands, your show is on demand in Ireland all the time. Um, for in for a penny for the first yeah. last two seasons anyway. So they're getting their value out of you. Yeah, it's going to be. Awesome. Cool. So, uh, but the first time you'll see the half seven Virgin Media one here, and uh, great to talk to you, Stephen Mulhern. Thanks so much. See you later, guys. All the best. Bye bye.